let's say you're a little low, you pull the stick back t- to get the ball centered, and then you go to neutral, it takes all that into account, adds the power that needs, adds different flight control inputs to keep your same angle of attack. And to the point now where I believe you don't even go to the boat in the training command in T-45s. Probably would see 450, maybe 500 knots if I felt really good on that day. But but you couldn't bleed the airspeed off if you flew parallel up the side, the starboard side of the ship, and then did the overhead brake. You needed some turn to bleed energy. So what you would do is you'd come across the the ass end, the stern of the ship, you know, in and uh, at your speed, but you'd start to pull right there. And then you could bleed off from 500 knots down to your approach speed to drop your gear flaps and all that other stuff and still be able to to make the trap. Um, but God forbid you screwed it up, right, and couldn't bleed the energy off and you end up boltering, and, you know, which means missing the wires or get a wave off because you're not even in there. Now you've just caused a whole bunch of problems because the ship's got to wait again for you and the whole time about it, naval aviation is trying to limit the time the ships in the wind because they're vulnerable submarines all that you become a, a, a kind of a stat it's not static but a, a known speed and direction and you don't want to have that as for a long period of time but when it works it's fabulous but when it doesn't work <laughs> it's it's always kind of some hell to pay down in the ready room or whatever but well, um, i mean hearing the guys talk about the, like the lso aspect of it or i mean Yes, I mean, it, is a, it is a science from hitting the perch point, the timing, you know, depending on the yeah. sea state, what the ship's doing, you, you know, watching. That's why I always I am impressed by it. And I know once you you do it a million times as an LSO stand on the back and you can see the slight pitch changes or maybe the exhaust can right. or black smoke, whatever it might be. Yeah. You've got a pretty good feeling of when this guy rolls out on final, like if it's going to work or not, probably right, right. away versus... Right. I mean, that's such a nuanced, I mean, that's precision that goes into that science. But uh, yeah, if you pork it away, obviously the other things you mentioned, I, I don't yeah. know if it's like the, that F-35 a couple of years ago, man, I think that one might've been porked away. Maybe there's some flight control issues, but yeah, uh, I'm not, you're trying you to know, play the floor. Yeah, of that. it's, it, you know, back Back then, there, like I said, there wasn't any digital flight controls, and it wasn't as easy as it was now. Now, to the point of, you know, in the newer airplanes, they have this thing called Magic Carpet. So, they have designed software within the airplanes, and I never had a chance to fly it. It's my understanding. You know, you have digital auto throttles with digital, you know, fuel control systems. Everything's, you know, perfect. And and you take the stick. Let's say you're a little low. You pull the stick back t- to get the ball centered, and then you go to neutral. It takes all that into account, adds the power that needs, adds the different flight control inputs to keep your same angle of attack. And to the point now where I believe you don't even go to the boat in the training command in T-45. So you may want to check this before you put it out on, on video, but... It's, uh, it's now etched in stone. This is the fact. So Okay, yeah. well, good. I might as well go out and say <laughs> this is what it should be. But I know that, you know, you may not go to the boat until you go to your first squadron, be it F-35s or or Hornets in the case of, uh, you know, being a naval fighter aviation. So, yeah, you know, so the other job that I had too is being an LSO and sitting on the platform. And and one of the things that's a little different, I don't know if anybody's talked about this before, but when the sea state gets to be such that it overpowers the gyros on that lens, right, that the, the lens, Fresno lens is gyro stabilized in a normal, I mean, a huge carrier is not going to pitch that much, but there are some sea states that are pretty aggressive and it will start pitching. They'll have to replace that with a thing called Mobilis, which basically is an LSO controlled glide slope indication on this instrument. So green datum lines that look exactly the same to the pilot out there. But then in the middle, the ball will go up and down, given the input of what the LSO is doing on the platform. So, and it was kind of a cool setup. It would, it, the post stuck into the deck of the carrier, and there was a handle on it in which a couple buttons, you could give a wave off. Like you've seen, I don't know if you've seen LSOs, they're holding something over their head. I think I sent you a picture you yep. can put in. On that, there's a, a button on the top that can be used for a little power. It's called a cut light. 
It can be used for a request a little power without having to say anything. A little lights come on. I think they were green above the thing. Or the wave off light, which was the big trigger finger, and then the ball goes away and red lights flash, and then the pilot is, is, is commanded to do a go around without having to say it. So anyway, that same thing got put in a handle, and it was on this vertical, I guess, assembly that had, it was, it was on a slider, and you could feel where they put a notch in it. And if that thing was in the notch, the ball behind you was showing on glide slope. So you never had to look over your shoulder. You knew that if it's in the notch and he's on glide slope and you want to show him on on path, you put it in the notch. The, the guy on fun and the approach is going a little high. You would pull it out of the notch, start lifting it up a little bit, and the ball would show him high. And then, of course, you should see a correction, and you would lead him down to show him an on glide path as he approached it. So the back of the ship could be doing this, but as long as you had a horizon line, and after a while, you know what three and a half degrees looks like. Um, one thing about naval aviation, we had a three and a half degree glide slope, which effectively was three degrees because the boat's moving 25 knots away from the airplane, right? Just the way the, the dynamics work out. So anyway, you would, you would do that, and we practiced it on good days and then on bad days, too. You'd bring it out and have to do it. Um, and there was a whole art form with it. You know, you'd watch the guy. He's got the ramp cleared. You, then you start showing him a little high because that kind of gets him down. He'll start to make a correction to come down into the wires. And so, but that's the way heavy sea states were handled, you know, trying to get birds, uh, birds aboard the boat. Um, and there's some great YouTube videos out there of just some unbelievable stuff that's gone on. And I fortunately never had to deal with that, you know, that bad of a weather in that regard. But anyway. Yet again, why I'm glad I went there for <laughs> well, Anytime right. I hear those stories, I'm like, that just sounds absolutely terrible. But it's amazing that guys and gals can yes. yeah, navigate through that process, which is right. not easy. Right. Well, Grant, right. I know we're getting a little long in the tooth. I yeah. hope you'll, one, hang around for a There I Was story. But as we kind of you know, get towards the end here, like looking back, obviously a very successful aviation career, which is something that not everyone is fortunate enough to, to make it that long in the aviation world. So uh, congrats to you. But looking well, back you. perspective wise, is there anything one I haven't asked you that I should be asking any you know parting shots, words of wisdom that you'd have for a younger you or someone who might be pursuing this path? You, you know, I Again, I'm gonna. I've, I've referred to this before, the old "fake it till you make it" type thing. I mean, it, it's funny whether you start a company or whatever. You need to make that your sole focus. And you know, it's it's interesting because I, I do having a couple of kids that went to the Air Force Academy. They have friends who've gone through pilot training and all that, and and they've asked on a, an occasion. And you know. You want to isolate yourself from as many outside distractions you possibly can. Uh, if it means a lot to you, you know, you're going to forego any sort of social things on occasion. Now, everybody needs that Friday night, you know, as as you know. But you, you do that, you nurse your hangover if that's what it's got on Saturday, and then you get back at it on Sunday, you know, start studying again. Um, I, I think it's just pure focus. And, you know... Guys have talent, uh, 